Hey everyone, Paul here, and today I want to talk to you about QuantumScape. QuantumScape stock has just been on a tear since November, and we look at from the beginning of November 2020 uh, to where we are now on January 7th, 2021. At the high point, the stock was up about a thousand percent over that time frame. Now, it's since pulled back from that high, but it is still up roughly about 500% from where it started in November uh, of last year. So that is a huge growth, right? And it's also a huge growth for a company that actually doesn't have any revenue yet. So this was a company that was founded in 2010. There's a lot of excitement around it. There's a lot of excitement around electric vehicles in general. And then of course you throw somebody like Bill Gates into the ring uh, with him being an investor in this company. Uh, I think that even kind of adds more fuel to the speculative fire. Uh, but what I want to do and what I want to do with, with really all companies is take a look at the valuation and figure out what needs to happen uh, you know, to justify the current stock price and at what price point you know, might this represent a good value. So with that in mind, let's jump over to that really quick. So I'm going to be sh showing you a, kind of a model I put together and this is a model that I like to use for a lot of different companies just to get a sense. And I mean, in this one, I'm, I'm going to be focusing on modeling out sales. Uh, and that approach really makes the most sense with a company that actually, you know, is not even profitable yet, let alone has sales. So um, that's the approach that we're going to be taking. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start out and I'm going to actually just at first assume that the company's guidance is correct. So uh, QuantumScape had an investor presentation where they indicated by 2027 that they were going to have about $3.3 billion in revenue, up significantly from the zero that they're currently at, of course, right? But Let's say that they actually do achieve that and they get to that 3.3 billion uh, by 2027. And then let's take a look at what they could be worth by 2030, right? So let's give them about nine years, give them till the end of the decade to achieve what they need to achieve. Well, even if they reach that 3.3 billion in 2027 and then subsequently grow by 50% every single year uh, until 2030, well, first of all, that would actually leave them with a revenue of uh, $11.1 billion by the year 2030, okay? Now, we can also start to ask what uh, investors would value those sales at, uh, you know? And I know that this really kind of comes down to, you know, your own kind of, a bit of your own preference, a bit of like what, how conservative you are, uh, things of that nature. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to say that, hey, look, I mean, if this company can actually grow by 50%, you know, if they're actually going to have this much success by 2030, I'll, I'll start out and I'll say, okay, may, maybe I'll assume that investors are willing to pay eight times sales. Okay, I, I don't think that's out of the question, but we can certainly take a look at a more conservative uh, price of sales multiple as well. But if all those things come together, and there's, there's also, by the way, let's assume no dilution in the stock, which for a company that's not generating any profit, I feel like that's not you know uh, the most likely scenario because if you're burning a lot of cash and it's going to take you years and years to make your first profit, one of the best ways to be able to get additional funds to keep funding your business is to just sell more stock. Okay, but even if they didn't sell any stock, and we're going to discount uh, at eight times sales in 2030, we're going to discount that and divide it out by the current number of shares, no dilution and we discount it back by 12%, we would come up with a valuation of about $88. So that is a premium over the current 68 where it's currently trading uh, as I'm filming this video. But again, that's with no dilution. I think the more likely scenario is, you know, that you know, there probably will be some. I mean, I could see the number of shares being doubled uh, by 2030, but again, to start out, let's just say that the shares will actually be increased by 50%. So currently about 363 million shares outstanding. Let's say that by the end of 2030, that there's actually a, you know about 545 million or so shares outstanding. Well, in that particular uh, instance, still discounting at 12%, we would arrive at a valuation of $59. So when, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I mean, certainly from $59, I mean, the, the problem with that is that when you're, again, when you're discounting that back, is that at least at the 12% discount, you're earning 12%, but when you look at it currently being at 68, you say, hey, is there really enough meat on the bone to justify this investment? And I don't really think that there could be with this scenario. Now, of course, if we were going to get more conservative, like let's say we bumped it down to six times sales, right? The story gets much worse all of a sudden, you know, with the full dilution, you know, you go down from 
the high 50s per share down to $44, uh, and then you'd go down to say that your average annual return over this time period would be about 6.7%. So again, well short of that 12% hurdle rate that we're trying to get to. So, so that is a, a scenario I wanted to walk through and I wanted to get a sense, again, you know, what would it take from like just a pure sales perspective, uh, you know, for this company to, uh, you know, be worth what it's currently trading at. Now, the other thing that I would really like to call out with a stock like QuantumScape is that it can be really tempting to kind of buy into a growth story without entirely understanding the science. Now, I understand that like if you're going to be investing in a company, you don't need to understand every single nuanced detail about their operation and what they do, um, you know, but at the same time, for me personally, I don't know a ton about batteries, okay? Like, I don't know, you know, enough to understand like how far away they are, how close they are. That's not like my expertise in any way, shape or form. So I feel like I would be, you know, personally, kind of too much outside of my comfort zone. Now, for you, that could be entirely different. If you're an engineer, if you're somebody that you've been studying this market for a long time, that could be different for you. And if you have reason to believe that, you know, this actually could really be, you know, a home run and that, you know, there's no no question in your mind that, you know, they'd be able to grow by, you know, 100% a year from 2027 if they were able to achieve this. So if you have that kind of, you know, specialized knowledge, by all means, you know, go forward with it. But what I really wanted to call out is, you know, don't get sucked into investing in something if you don't truly understand the business, especially when they're actually isn't really a business even in place yet. Again, pre-revenue, they're not profitable. It's gonna be a very, very long time until they are profitable. Okay, so again, just something to definitely keep in mind. And, you know, I would contrast that, you know, because there, there have been situations I've been in where I understood more about a particular industry that maybe somebody else would have been out of their comfort zone. And, you know, I'll give you an example. There was a company called Avalara. So they're a cloud computing uh, tech software company. And, you know, for me, I understood enough about what they did. I understood the stickiness of the corporate clients that they were getting. To me, that represents a really good investment. And again, somebody else who maybe didn't have that corporate experience, somebody else who maybe didn't understand that company, you know, that might have been too risky for them. But for me, I understood enough to be able to pull the trigger and I made some money on that deal. So what am I going to do? I think this is a really exciting company. Again, I mean, there's a lot of good things going for uh, a lot of good things going for QuantumScape, but ultimately I would need a lower price point. I mean, I think anything below fifty dollars, anything below forty dollars, I'm going to start you know you know, being open to the idea that I'm going to put some speculative funds to work on this, with the idea that I would want to hold on to them for you know a multi-year period of time, as as is my target for most stocks I'm going to be investing in. But I think that's kind of the value too, I think, of being able to calculate a price target, you know, before it gets to a certain price. Because, you know, again, let's say this thing fell to $30, you know, in a couple of months from now. Well, all of a sudden, because I've already done the research and I already have that number, I already know that, hey, now this is at a point, you know, there's nothing like fundamentally changed about the business. I mean, if, if it's falling to 30 because Bill Gates backed out, if it's falling to 30 because, you know, the competitor announced that they're, you know, going to market sooner or any of those things, that is a different situation. But if nothing's really fundamentally changed with the business and they go down to $30 and I've already done the homework in advance, now I can say pretty calmly and rationally that, hey, that is now officially meeting the price target that I would need to justify an investment. So I know that QuantumScape, you know, is kind of, kind of a, a popular name out there. So I just wanted to give a quick overview of the valuation uh, and what it would take to justify the current price. And again, that final warning to say, really make sure if you're gonna get into some of these really high growth companies that you understand the business uh, well enough to justify the investment. So thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next video.